Marshall. Bang, bang, you're dead, shouts a little child. And his playmate clutches at his heart and collapses to the ground. Now, when children play this game, are they innocently imitating their elders, or are they expressing some deep-seated biological urge? Are professional killers basically children who have never outgrown the game? Is the taste for murder ingrained or acquired? Questions like these should never be answered quickly. Lieutenant Kaufman, I was sent in here to see you. Uh, how can I help? A man named Tom Beckwith was murdered last night. Oh, that's right. Do you have any information that would... Yes, uh... I, uh, I'm responsible for his death. Uh, uh, what are you saying, Mr., uh... Wilson. Uh... Roger Wilson. I caused his death. Are you confessing to the crime? I suppose that's the only way to put it. How did you murder Tom Beckwith? I... I wished him dead. You wished him dead? Yes, Lieutenant. I wished him dead. I wished it with all my strength. He was killed by two shots from a thirty-eight caliber pistol. Now, did you fire them? That's immaterial. Uh, Mr. Wilson, you don't look well at all. I'll, I'll have an officer see you to your home. I see. Well... Let the record show that I did my duty as a citizen. Our mystery drama, The Transformer, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Howard Da Silva. Mysterious transformations. Life changes from one shape, one form, yes, one existence, to another. What were we before? Were you always the same? Have you always harbored the same hopes, ideas, ambitions? Suppose the person you were ten years ago should meet the person you are today. Would it be a happy meeting? Let us meet Roger Wilson. Roger Wilson, 42 years of age, just beginning to lose hair and gain weight. Roger Wilson, who has already accepted the fact that while he will not set the world on fire, he will at least bask in a cheery, comfortable glow. Roger? You were expecting... I was expecting a knight in shining armor. Again? I thought I showed up 15 years ago. Why didn't you call from the airport in Chicago and tell me which flight you'd be on so I'd know what to do about dinner? The only thing I have to do about dinner tonight is eat it. Get your coat. Which one? The mink. Oh, which client are we supposed to impress tonight? Tonight? <laughs> tonight is all fun. We're never supposed to have fun at dinner. We're supposed to be in there selling away. Oh, come on. It's not that bad. Oh, the nonsense I've had to hold still for these past 15 years. Well, Dolly, if you sold your soul, at least it wasn't for a mess of pottage. It's been first class all the way. Whose ego do I have to flatter tonight? Tonight you're going to meet the greatest guy in all the world. All right. I'll laugh at his jokes. After all, he's a client. He's not a client. He's not. <laughs> You'll be crazy about Chappie. Chappie? Beryl Spencer Chapman. Beryl? Well, you know, some people's parents have absolutely no sense of the fitness of things. They named his sister Sam. Anyhow, everyone calls him Chappie. But what good is Chappie able to do you, uh, business-wise? Dolly, I don't even know what business he's in. Roger? He told me he's in the Transformer business, but we didn't go into it. We were just so happy to see each other. <laughs> it's going to be 25 years. A quarter of a century. Where did it go? Don't ask me. There we were, two kids in Korea. And suddenly, it's all these years later. <laughs> well, I guess that's life. 
And I guess this is going to be one of your nights for deep philosophical statements, hmm? <laughs> there I am in the passenger lounge at O'Hare Airport in Chicago. I'm looking at this guy, and he's looking at me. And suddenly I yell out, Chappy! Just the exact same split second he hollers, Roger! <laughs> How would you feel if you're after somebody you knew 25 years ago? I can't think of anybody I knew 25 years ago that I'd care to see today. He hadn't changed a bit. Well, where is this legendary chappy? Where? If he was such a great buddy, why didn't you bring him home? He has this business meeting at 6.15. That's why he came here. If he has a meeting at a quarter after 6, how can he have dinner with us? What are you talking about? A man comes all the way into New York for an evening meeting and it doesn't include dinner? Well, what's... Well, what's so radical about that? Well, you could never treat a client like that and get away with it. Well, maybe he's the client. Anyhow, he's going to meet us in Luigi's at 6.45. You mean he came all the way to New York for a meeting that will hardly last a half hour? He's a man of very few words. Oh, really? Well, that should be quite refreshing. You must be a very efficient businessman, Chappie. Why? Well, I'm simply amazed at how quickly you're able to conclude a business meeting. Are you? When Roger gets involved in these things, they can go on for hours, even days. Do they? I can never get Dolly to understand. There's so much to talk about. How do you avoid all that talk, Chappie? Well, what's to talk about? You know the deal? You go in and close it. <laughs> what kind of business are you in? Transformer business. Tell me all about it. It's kind of technical. Well, I was a science major at college. A transformer is an instrument used for changing voltage. You have a step-down transformer. You have step-up transformers. Oh, darling. I'm sure Chappie doesn't really want to talk shop. All right, you're absolutely right. When a couple of old war buddies get together, I'm sure they can't wait to swap stories. I'll sit here quiet as a mouse and just let you boys talk. <sighs> Dolly... When you see, Chappie and I were very close. Very close. And one of the reasons we got along so well was because we could just sit there in that foxhole for hours and just say nothing. How could you just sit there for hours and, and say nothing? Well, sometimes by saying nothing, you say everything. How about dessert? Uh, nothing for me. Cheesecake. <laughs> We have bacon and eggs, toast. <laughs> Why do you always make breakfast? You know I only want coffee. I don't make it. I only say I do to maintain the franchise. Well, how'd you like Chappie? I like strong, silent men, but... Yeah, we would sit there in the mud and the snow day after day, night after night. We'd hardly speak a word. How did you communicate? Uh, extrasensory perception? We only had one aim, to keep alive. I would look out for him, and he would look out for me. Well, I can't imagine you not saying a word for days on end. You haven't answered my question. Which question? How'd you like Chappie? Has he left town? No, he plans to stay for a week or two. As a matter of fact, we're having lunch. A quiet lunch, no doubt. Now for your morning news headline. Oh, must we? Gangster Chief Tony Arman was murdered last night. The victim, obviously, of a gangland execution. The medical examiner places the time of death at about 6.30 p.m. The killer fired two lethal shots and disappeared as if into thin air. No one in the neighborhood, 3rd Avenue and 67th Street, heard or saw anything suspicious. Your next headline report in 10 minutes. 3rd Avenue and 67th Street? Oh, well, we were just two blocks north of there at Luigi's. You still haven't told me what you think about Chappie. Oh, He doesn't seem to be your type. I mean, you appear to have nothing in common. Uh, when you're huddled in a foxhole, you have everything in common. Because after the war, you drift apart. But there's always that, that deep feeling of friendship. He has fascinating eyes. Yeah? When he first came into the restaurant, they had sort of a, a glow. And then they changed and they seemed to grow softer. As soon as she spoke about that look in his eyes, I got a sudden chill down my spine. I knew that look. I remembered that look. 
That funny look that glowed in his eyes. Every time. Each time. Each time. Each time he would be crouching there, freezing, peering desperately into the darkness. You hear something? Yeah. Yeah, Chappie. Something's moving. Where? I don't know. Wait, I see him. Where? That clump of bushes at 10 o'clock. See? Yeah. Must be 500 yards. More like six. Uh, let me raise my sights. Chappie. Yeah? He's... He's headed home. Let him go. Let him go? He's just some goof off. They got goof-offs on their side, too. He got lost. Let him go home. Watch this, Raj. Watch me squeeze it off. Got him. And the body that was crawling in the snow suddenly stiffened and became still. It would remain still forever. I looked at Chappie. He was breathing very slowly through his mouth. And there was that look... The look I can neither explain nor describe in his eyes. Roger, I'm glad you made it. <laughs> made what? It. Remember the it we used to talk about back there? Come home, marry a good-looking dame, get a good deal. Oh, well. Did you make it too, Chappie? Sure. Everything except the dame, but I'm still looking. Well, marriage. It has its good points, has its bad points. You know, I love Dolly, but <laughs> there are times when I could kill her. Yeah? No, I'm just kidding. I worried about you, Roger. Why? You saved my life. You saved mine, too. Well, that don't make it even. I worried you wouldn't make it when you got back home. Why? Because you're soft. But now I feel better. I see you're all set. You must have a great job. Well, <laughs> I thought it was a great job. Five years ago. Something wrong with it now? Yeah. It's the end of the line. No? It's only one place I can go, and that's general sales manager. It sounds big. Oh, sure. But you see, Chappie, it won't happen. Why not? You've got the stuff. I've also got a problem. His name is Tom Beckwith. Tom Beckwith? Thomas Eldon Beckwith, Jr. Why is he a problem? Well, he's alive. Yeah? Well, you see, Chappie, he happens to be my age, and so... I kind of stuck out on a siding with no way of getting switched onto the main line. I see. Well, I, I won't starve, exactly. How's the transformer business? Chappie? Hmm? Oh, uh, what time you got? That's about a quarter after. Now, you know, I just remembered I got to see a guy. Let me have the check, huh? No, no, I'll... No, come, I'll on, come on, come no, on, come on. It's my party. <laughs> This is ready. Just coffee. What's on our schedule this evening? Well, Chappie wants to take us to dinner. Ah, another restful evening. He wants to celebrate. Celebrate? What? Well, he called me at the office late yesterday afternoon. He said he expected to make a killing. A killing in Transformers? Sounds fascinating. Now, you don't like Chappie. Admit it. I didn't at first. But he kind of grows on you. Time for another morning headline. Uh, good news, Harry himself. Electronics company executive Thomas Eldon Beckwith, Jr. was shot and killed late last night in the garden of his summer cottage at Fashionable Lake Surrey. Huh. State police theorize that Mr. Beckwith surprised a prowler. So far, there are no leads or clues. Anyone with any information at all that could be useful is asked to call a special number, 227-8308. We shall have another headline report in ten minutes. No doubt he will. But it's hard to imagine another headline of any kind that would equal this one in impact on Roger Wilson. Well, what do we have here? Is Chappie a professional killer? Or is it all coincidence? Don't downgrade coincidence. Better still, don't do anything. Just wait here for a few moments, and I shall return with Act Two. There's a man named Thomas Eldon Beckwith, Jr., or 
uh, we should say, there was a man named Thomas Eldon Beckwith, Jr. We never met Mr. Beckwith, and, uh, of course, now, we never will. The late Mr. Beckwith happened to stand in the way of Roger Wilson's promotion. Roger casually mentioned this fact to his old army buddy, Chappie. Thomas Eldon Beckwith, Jr. was shot to death last night. Are we dealing here with cause and effect? Tommy Beckwith. I can't believe it. Neither can I. Who could that be? I don't know. You want me to answer it? No, no. I'll get it. Yes? Mr. Roger Wilson? Yes. I'm a police officer, Lieutenant Kaufman of the Homicide Division. Homicide? Yes. May I come in? Oh, oh, sure. My wife, Mrs. Wilson. Dolly, this is Lieutenant... Uh... Uh, Kaufman. Will you have a cup of coffee, Lieutenant? Mm. No, thank you. We just heard about Tom Beckwith's death. It was on the radio. Oh, I suppose that's why you're here. Yes. Well, what do you want to ask me? Did uh, Mr. Beckwith have any enemies that you know of? Well, I thought the radio said he was killed by a prowler. Well, he may have been, but a prowler would have robbed him. He was still wearing an expensive ring and a gold watch, and he had $200 in his pocket. Oh. Well, the prowler might have been frightened by the killing and ran away without... Yes, that's quite possible, Mr. Wilson. Anything's possible. That's why we're following every line of approach. Oh. Well, what can I tell you? And you could answer my question. Did he have any enemies? Tom? Hmm? No. No. <laughs> so why do I say that? You see, I really didn't know Tom very well. Well, you worked with him for over 15 years. Well, we knew each other at the office. I, I, we didn't socialize too much, did we, did we, Dolly? Uh, no. I knew very little about his personal life. Uh, well, uh, had Mr. Beckwith been behaving in a way that uh, might be considered unusual lately? No. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Well, do you know anyone who stands to benefit by his death? No, I, I couldn't say. Yeah. Well, I understand you would. Me? Yes. Some of the people I spoke to at your office tell me that uh, you're next in line for his job. Oh, well, that doesn't mean I killed him, does it? No, no, not at all. But you just as, as, as good accused me. Well, no, 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 I, I made no accusation. Well, then what are, you, what are you talking about? Uh, Mr. Wilson, we can travel down one of two ways. Now, we can assume he was killed by a prowler. Now, this then becomes a, a random murder, which has nothing to do with the personal life of Mr. Beckwith. He was killed because of uh, where he was. Or we can say he was killed because he happened to be Thomas Eldon Beckwith, Jr. Now, this means he was killed because of who he was. Now, do you follow me? Hmm? Yes, I think so. So, we're asking questions, exploring possibilities, no matter how far out they may seem. And I would like you to help. How? Well, just don't inhibit your thinking. Uh, let your mind travel. If you have any kind of suspicion, any kind of supposition, no matter how far-fetched, uh, don't be afraid to mention it. All right. Good. Now, here. Please take this card. It has my number on it. And if anything occurs to you... Uh... Okay. <laughs> all right. That's, that's all for now. Well, thank you for your time, Mr. Wilson. Mrs. Wilson. Goodbye, Lieutenant. Oh, no, no. Don't bother. I can let myself out. Tom Beckwith. Who could have killed Tom Beckwith? Evidently, that lieutenant thinks I did. Oh, Roger, come on. He doesn't think anything of the sort. Besides, how could you have done it? You were home with me all night. Yeah. That's an advantage of married life. You have a built-in alibi. Roger? You're white as a ghost. You're shaking. I'll be all right. Roger, death is always a tragedy. It's too bad about Tom Beckwith, but by no stretch of the imagination can you pretend you two were friends. It's one thing to be sorry, but how can you be so cut up about it? I'm not cut up. Roger, tell me. What's the matter? What was I going to tell her? I didn't even know what to tell myself. Chappy. Was it possible? It was just a vague suspicion. But now, this... 
But don't inhibit your thinking, said the lieutenant. Let your mind travel, no matter how far-fetched. All right, lieutenant. What do you want me to tell you? A war buddy of mine is a professional killer? Just suppose, just suppose for the sake of argument, that I went to your office right now and tried to explore this far-fetched suspicion with you. How, how would you react? Lieutenant, I know who killed Tom Beckwith. Do you? A man named Beryl Spencer Chapman. I uh, go slow. Now, I have to write it all down. He likes to kill. I know that from when we were in Korea 25 years ago. He used to get a look in his eyes. A look? Well, you know, this gangster who was gunned down the other night, Tony Armin? Yeah. A few minutes after Armin was shot, Chappie joined us at a nearby restaurant, and he had this killer's look in his eyes. Now, let me write this down. The killer's look. The next day, I mentioned, I just happened to mention that... Yeah? Then what? That Tom Beckwith was the one who was standing in the way of my promotion to general sales manager. I better write that down. And last night, Beckwith was shot to death. Why did you mention it to Chappie? Why? Yes. Why? Well, because... Because... Was it because you hoped that Chappie would kill him? No, 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 that thought never entered my mind. You suspected Chappie of being a professional killer. Well, I, uh... You wanted Chappie to kill Beckwith. No. Subconsciously, you wanted him to kill Beckwith. You wanted him to kill Beckwith. Where were you? Huh? Chappie and I have been sitting here for about ten minutes now, waiting for you to come out of that trance. What trance? You have been sitting there, your eyes wide open. But I'm sure you must have been dreaming. Was he like that when you were in Korea, Chappie? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I guess I must have dozed off. I stared closely at Chappie. What I had come to think of as the killer look was nowhere evident in his eyes. Oh, maybe it never existed. Maybe it was all my imagination. All of us was being constructed from a fragment of a shrouded memory that was almost 25 years old when we were 19-year-old kids. Chappie, the smiling, happy, quiet man, a killer? No, I'm sure he isn't. Even Dolly likes him. Dolly has an instinct for people. If Chappie were evil, Dolly would automatically shy away from him. Now, send him in. You wanted to see me, Mr. Struthers? Uh, yes, I want to see you, Roger. You know why? Well, I... You're under the impression that I'm going to offer you back with job, aren't you? Well, Mr. Struthers, I... Uh, everywhere I go around here, I hear the same thing. Roger Wilson's going to be the next general sales manager. Well, I did have reason to believe I was next in line. I... Line? <sighs> what line? What is this? A bus station? I've given this company 20 years. I know. I... And you have been well paid for it. Now, Beckwith is dead. Yes, sir. Now, why should I replace him with another Beckwith? Sir? You're another Beckwith. You're the same style. Oh, no, sir. With all due respect, I think I'd be a better sales manager than Tom was. Well, you'll have to prove it. Now, there's one account this company must have. Webster. Webster? Webster, right now, buys 20% of all the components manufactured in this industry. Now, Webster's growing every day. I want that account in this house. But, sir... Beckwith couldn't bring it in. Can you? Do you realize there's a deep personal situation that exists at Webster? Well, we make a better product. We can give them a better deal. Yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> now, listen. You want me to give you the sales manager's job? You give me Webster. Say, what is this? Darling, it's your victory celebration. Candlelight, silver, champagne. A victory. Your appointment to general sales manager calls for a very special dinner. Well, who's that, I wonder? That's Chappie. Chappie? Your best and closest friend. I thought you'd want him to be part of it. Well, sure. You let him in. Give him a drink. I'll check the roast. Chappie, come in. That's it. Well, join me in a little libation here. Mm-hmm. To the new job. Well, uh... Well, what? Well, about that new job. You didn't get it? Well, there's a condition. Yeah. The top account in the industry is an outfit called Webster Manufacturing. And they don't buy from us unless I can bring them in. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, I can see the old man's point. We should have that account. And would. Except, well, it's something personal. Personal? Yeah. Yeah, we have a competitor. And they have a salesman. We don't know how he does it, but he's got Webster all wrapped up. He has, huh? Yeah, I spoke to Jim Webster himself. Mm-hmm. He as much as told me, Roger, he said, I'd buy from you folks in a flash. You got the product, you got the price, but... But what? But as long as Jerry's alive, he said, I'm obligated. Why is he obligated to Jerry? I don't know. Ah, it doesn't matter. As long as he feels that way. Yeah. So that's that. Sure. Well, maybe it's time I found another job anyhow. What's Jerry's last name? What'd you say? I said, what's Jerry's last name? Boy, is that important? Well, what is it? Well, why would you want to know his last name? I'm just curious. Okay, forget it. How about a refill? Sure. His name is Trask. Jerry Trask. Jerry Trask. A name suddenly surfaces. Is Mr. Trask about to meet with a violent end? Well, who among us can guarantee tomorrow? But this does not seem to be a happy time for those people who stand in the way of our friend Roger Wilson. Is war buddy Chappie expressing professional curiosity? Indeed, is he even a professional? Well, we usually answer these questions in Act 3 which I shall bring you in just a few moments. A man named Jerome J. Trask is walking his dog very late one night along a quiet street in New York City. He approaches the corner. Someone is standing in the shadow of an apartment building. That someone cannot be discerned in the darkness. And that gleam is the shine that is reflected from a steel pistol barrel. More coffee? No, this is fine. What'd you say? Let's turn this thing off so we can hear ourselves talk. No, leave it on. Why? I want to hear the morning headlines. I can't imagine what for. They're always so depressing. It's always some murder. Roger? Hmm? Something wrong? No. Are you sure? Nothing's wrong. But why do you insist? It's just that you seem to be so nervous this morning. I'm not nervous. Did, uh... Did Chappie enjoy dinner last night? Sure. I mean, I think so. Why do you ask? Well, he left early. Why, do you suppose? Now, your morning news headline. Well, here he is again, Doleful Donald. Is our city in for a wave of random murders? Is a mad killer loose in the streets? Early this morning, another senseless shooting, another tragic death. Just before dawn, Jerome J. Trask, 37, was shot to death as he was walking his dog along East End Avenue and 77th Street. At this moment, police are unable to supply further details. We shall return in ten minutes with your next headline report. Well, another morning, another murder. Roger? You know, lately you've been getting a funny look on your face. What kind of funny look? Just kind of funny and, and far away, as if... As if you're not with us. You just kind of disappear. What do you mean, disappear? You sit there and you give the impression that you're off somewhere in another time or another place. I just had some things to think about. Some some very puzzling things. Like what? Like, I'm not even sure I know. Well, you're a fountain of information. Did you call in and get us a starting time? Starting time? At the club, we're playing golf this morning. You and I and Chappie. Golf? Oh, Roger, we spoke about it last night. Now that has to be Chappie. I'll get it. You pour him a cup of coffee. Hello, Chappie. Come on in. We probably won't tee off until after lunch. Roger forgot to get us a starting time. Was he this absent-minded in the Army? (laughs) Sometimes.
absent minded in the army? <laughs> Sometimes. We uh, were just talking about you, Chappie. I was hoping you had a good time last night. I did. It's just that you left so early. Oh, it was a business appointment. Ten o'clock at night? That's the Transformer business. Transformer. That word hit a chord. Struck a nerve. The way he said, Transformer. It was the way I had said Transformer years ago in a foxhole in Korea. They were attacking us in force. And we were throwing everything we had at them. Okay, Jenny. Okay. Okay, you're wasting the taxpayers' money. There's nothing to hit out there anymore. They all went home. You got any water? Yeah. I get so thirsty after a firefight, I could just keep drinking for hours. Well, it goes half a canteen. Honey, how many of them did you get, Raj? None. I just fired into the air. I counted 14. 14 definite. I saw him go down. It could have been more. You want to stand guard a while? i got to clean my rifle. Now? Rifle should be cleaned every time it's been fired. All right, go ahead. When's the last time you cleaned yours, Raj? Oh, let me see. I mean, just because nobody comes around for inspection, that doesn't mean it. Don't worry about me, Chappie. i got to worry. You're my buddy, aren't you? <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, nothing. Yeah? <laughs> well, it's the way you handle that rifle. In your hands, it isn't just some standard government issue. It's a... It's what? It's a mystical object. Yeah? What's that? Well, let's say it's a kind of cosmic transformer. A transformer because it... Well, it works like a... It works like cataclysmic transformation. <laughs> Where do you get all them big words, Raj? That's what you learn in co college. Where was I? Oh, yes. A rifle is a transformer. It transforms the living into the dead. How do you like that? I like it. Yeah, I like it pretty good. You know something, Raj? I may even go into the transformer business when I get home. Transformer business? Why not? Well, for one thing, it's against the law. That ain't gonna bother me. Why not? Them laws are passed by fat politicians. I already broke a bigger law. Which one is that? God's law. Don't it say in the Bible, thou shalt not kill? So what are we doing out here? This is different. It's always different. There's an explanation. There's a what million explanations, Raj. I figure I'm in bed already, so go all the way. All the way? Where? Here I've been killing people for the government for less than 200 a month. That's not the way to look at it. I know guys who pay better. A whole lot better. Yeah. Transformer business. You want to go in it with me when we get home? No, thanks. You see, Chappie, that's what I meant. He just disappears on us. Come on. What are, you, what are you talking about? You. You were sitting there for over a minute with a blank look in your eyes, wasn't he, Chappie? Anybody mind if I have another glass of orange juice? Oh, help yourself. Must be very thirsty this morning. Yeah. I get that way sometimes. Sir, a gentleman to see you. Who is it? He's a police detective, a Lieutenant Kaufman. Oh, send him in. I'm uh, sorry to barge in on you at your office, Mr. Wilson. Sit down, uh, Lieutenant... Uh... Uh, Kaufman. That's right. What can I do for you? I don't know. <laughs> well, then. Uh, uh, Mr. Wilson, let me speak frankly and off the record. Now, uh, Mr. Beckwith is shot to death. Soon after, uh, Mr. Trask is murdered. Do you know who would be my prime suspect in both cases if he didn't have an ironclad alibi, huh? You. Me? Why? Mr. Beckwith stood in your path for promotion? Well, I haven't been promoted yet. Yet. Mr. Trask was the most formidable competitor. You admit I have an alibi, and I know I didn't do it. Mr. Wilson, last time I asked you to think, to explore any angle, any glimmer, regardless of how crazy it might seem. Well, nothing occurs to me. Uh-huh. Well, could you, could you advance any theory why two men, both of whom were known to you, should be mysteriously murdered within the same week? Could you? Could I? Could I? Could I say I suspect my friend Chappie of being a professional killer? All I have to do is say that. The lieutenant will counter, but why did I use him? But I didn't use him. I didn't know for a fact the Chappie is a killer. I still don't know. 
Don't I? He is. He is, and I used him. I needed him. The fact is, I would have killed Beckwith for his job, and I would have killed Trask for the Webster account. I would have, if I could. But I can't kill. So I used Chappie, just as I depended on him to kill for me back in the war. No, Lieutenant, you're right. I'm your prime suspect. But the case has to be closed. Excuse me, Lieutenant. Yes? Hey, Roger. What are you doing right now? I, uh... I'm in a meeting, Mr. Struthers. Well, when you're finished, go outside in the corridor and see the new name that's being painted on what used to be Beckwith's door. Mr. Struthers. Webster called me personally. He told me that we were getting his business thanks to your efforts. He thinks very highly of you. Sir, I don't know how to thank you. Well, I know how you can thank me. Double our value. Well, Mr. Wilson? Huh? Uh, does uh, anything at all uh, occur to you? Uh, no, Lieutenant. I'm sorry. I don't have the faintest idea why those two men could have been killed. Hello? Dolly? Roger, are you at the airport? Yes, I'm at the airport in Kansas City. Roger, it's my birthday. I know, but I had to close this deal. You haven't been home in two weeks. Look, I can't help it. All right. Listen, I'm sorry. I'll be home Tuesday, okay? Okay. Hello? Dolly, I... Uh, oh, what is it this time? It's kind of overcast here in Atlanta, and I can't get out tonight. Dolly? All right, Roger, where are you now? Uh, Roger. Oh, hello, Mr. Struthers. I'm glad I caught you before you left out. We have to get to the airport. Now? This minute. There's a bad problem in Denver. But tonight is my anniversary. Uh, well, uh, congratulations. Now, uh, do we have a file on... Sir, the... my wife is waiting for me. Call her up. Tell her uh, something much more important has happened. Well, look, Mr. Struthers, I can't say that to my wife. You can if it's the truth. Now, is it more important to drink some champagne in a nightclub than to protect your job? Chappie. Dolly. Come in. Well, sit down. Have a drink? Sure. Roger's due home from Denver at six. Unless... Unless what? Unless he calls at the last minute and says he has to go somewhere else. Chappie, I don't know what I'd have done without you to keep me company. You know... Roger has changed. Yeah? It's as if some demon has possessed him. It's that job of his. That's all he lives for. He certainly doesn't care about me anymore. You know, there are times... Times when... When what? I better not say it. You can say anything to me. Even to you. Go ahead. There are times when I... I would like to kill him. Yeah? Well, here I am. Hello, Dolly. Honey. Hello, Chappie. I'm glad you yeah. could make it, Roger. You sure you don't have anything more important to do? Oh, come on, honey. You have to understand it. My job makes the Let's man. not start that again. You boys have a drink. I'll see about dinner. Sure. <sighs> Yeah, she can knock the job, all right, but you'll notice she has no objection to all the money. She's changed, Chappie. <laughs> She's not the same sweet, understanding kid I married. She gets me so mad, I wish... Yeah? Ah, forget it. Sure? <laughs> there were times I wish... I wish I could kill her. Thanks for driving me out to the airport, Chappie. Sure. I know it's an imposition. <laughs> Where would I get a cab at this hour of the night? It's okay, it's okay. I, I couldn't ask Dolly to drive me. I, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't. 
What's that? What's that noise in the engine? I don't hear anything. Oh, it sounds like something got loose. Better have a look. Uh, you want to hold the flashlight? Do you know what to do? I mean, un- underneath that hood? <laughs> it's all a mystery to me. Do you have any tools? Oh, I need one tool, Roger. I carry it with me all the time. What's that? A transformer. <gasps> Jabby. What are you going to do? I'm going to make a transformation. Chappie, you can't. You know, Raj, I've been making transformations for the government, for personal clients, for friends. And now for the first time in my life, I'm making one for me. You, you're not going to kill me, Chappie. No, I'm just going to transform you. Why? Why? Because Dolly asked me to. But Dolly doesn't know. She knows. Like you knew. That's why you kept asking, didn't you, Raj? Asking me to transform those guys. But, but why... Why kill me? Because she needs this transformation to make her happy. And so do I. Chappy! It won't hurt. That morning, there was another headline. And Lieutenant Kaufman of Homicide was even more puzzled than ever. His only comfort might be derived from the fact that sometimes bad things occur in a series of three. And if he can't find the killer, at least there won't be any more of those particular killings. I don't know. It all depends on what Dolly's needs are. I'll be back shortly. of death. It begins innocently enough in childhood and progresses into more and more serious variations as we grow older. Still, it must remain a game. After all, if you look at it, it has rules, it has penalties, and when it's over, everyone goes home and becomes friends again. Isn't that the story of the world? Aren't so many of yesterday's enemies today's bosom friends? It's all a question of changing, of evolving. And it goes on all the time. Our cast included Howard Da Silva, Terry Keene, Mandel Kramer, and Earl Hammond. The entire production.